Good evening, all, and welcome to Calbar's Corner as we continue our walk down this road to retention. I am Baron Calbar Geiler, companion of the Meridian Cross, companion of the Argent Comet, companion of the Pilgrim Star, companion of the Palmer's Lantern, the defender of the West and Reaper. Coming to you live from the Southwest Outpost in the Barony of South Downs here on the beautiful southern coast of Meridiers. Now, obviously, I am not Baroness Remoot. Uh, Her Excellency has taken ill this evening and has called in for backup, so I'm here and we're making it happen. Now, joining us for this episode, we have a fine pair of folks from the other side of the states from our last guest, as they currently call the East Kingdom home. But they are former Westies, having served as royalty in the far northern reaches of Ortha. Please welcome to the show Viscount Cullen and Viscountess Seva. Good evening, Your Excellencies. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? I, I you know, I'm fantastic. I, I have a fancy hat on, and we're making the show work, guys. Yes, sounds great. Uh, uh, if you will, uh, st- let's start off with some introductions, a little bit about who you are, and, and of course, there we go, we are two minutes in, the cat's on the table, <laughs> okay, <laughs> knew it was going to happen. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> so if you'll introduce yourselves and your lovely cat and who you are and why you're in fact awesome. Well, that's Yalmir, uh, and he's a, about as smart as a hammer. Yeah. Uh, I'm Viscountess Seva Harappan's daughter. I'm uh, originally from the Principality of Awartha, which is in the West Kingdom. I started in SCA when I was like seven, so that was um, like over 30 years ago. So, uh, (laughs) eventually I met this guy and I moved here to the East. Uh, I'm Viscount, Viscount Kellen McKinnon. Uh, started playing in the East in, uh, 93, 93, 94, somewhere around there. Um, played here most of my life, squared to Duke Logan, was knighted here in the East and, uh, met this girl, packed up my stuff, moved to, uh, the West Kingdom in Ortha for a few years. And, uh, uh, then we came back to the East <laughs> and so, here we are. <laughs> so yeah, at this point, love literally took you to both sides of the country. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the NSBA. Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> to, be fair to, to be fair. So, uh, as, as former Westies and now Easties and we're so Weasties, as they as they call you, yeah. um, <laughs> I know the terminology. I know what's up. Uh, so I, I have to say, you were, you were recommended to me by uh, by a fellow Eastie, uh, Baron Sampson, a uh, former guest here on the show, and uh, and just awesome all around individual. Um, I, I have known of, of both of yours uh, name fame uh, from, from stories, both good and bad, mostly the bad for Colin. Um, yeah, I, I know what's up again. Um, and of course, I, I know Her Excellency as uh, being the name triplet to my wife. So, uh, and we did not know there was another way to pronounce Sifa. Apparently there is. So <laughs> we now know three ways to pronounce those four letters. We still don't know which one's actually right. Um, we have to, I think you, you guys need to find the fourth one just so there's a full set of all four letters being pronounced differently. We got to find you one more. I haven't pronounced the fourth one, but we haven't found the fourth one. See? Okay. You guys have work to do. All right. We do. We do. All right. So I want to read a little bit about what uh, Samson said about you guys because I thought it was just uh, spectacular. Oh. So there are a couple of folks who have opened their own home to people for every Sunday practice of rattan, rapier, and fiber arts. So spreading the love there. And this last phrase, they really exemplify what family means in the SCA. That to me was the like, oh, hit me in the heart, man. And I think that family idea is, is a really a key retention. So I want to talk some about that about that tonight, uh, and just really about what you guys do and why you know sort of why you guys have this reputation for being really awesome people in the SCA. Um, so talk a little about what you do currently, sort of what your passions are, and uh, we'll start there. Sure. Um, so uh, a little bit of background on the whole family perspective. I was an only child brought up in the SCA. So really everyone around me was sort of kind of like a family member in one way or form. Um, eventually I became old enough to become a chatelaine. And so then I was a chatelaine in, you know, various, various capacities for, you know, a couple of decades. And when we moved to the East, I didn't have what I felt was my support. And um, we got married and we decided to form our own household with our dependents. 
and basically say, we're not here just to support you. Bring your friends, let us be support for them. Bring newcomers, let us be backbone for them. You know, everyone needs some form of support in the SBA. So when we came here, that was something that we really just wanted to offer and have available because we had the means, like we had a backyard for a practice. We had a shop for shop stuff. I had a sewing machine for sewing. Um, you know, we had the, the, the means and the access and the room. So it was like, come, let, let us help you. So that way we can make it not as frustrating being in the SCA when you're a newcomer and you don't know as much as maybe, let's say, the person you're next to. Right. Because this hobby can be frustrating to start out it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And especially and, like people are commenting on your setup and I'm, I'm just looking at you people who have been around for a, a couple of decades and, and this is not easy to put together. Not easy to sort of have those resources. And this, and this doesn't happen overnight. Right. Right. Um, you know, I, I am a big proponent of fake it until you make it. Uh, those aren't real candles. Those are fake candles with batteries. They look pretty and they look real enough to do what I want. I feel like I, that describes me sometimes. Just real up there. It's just it's all I got. You know? <laughs> I'm not battery powered, but damn it, sometimes I wish it was. Yeah, but like, you know, someone may not have a sewing machine. They might have, um, you know, the, the know how to do the sewing. So we open up our home to, you know, not just our, you know, our family, our household, but to our friends, our barony. You know, anyone who, you know, we know, we like, hey, come over, we're doing this thing. Mm. And they can use what we have as long as they know how to. And if they don't know how to, we teach them. Right. Uh, anything to add to that, Colin? Uh, from, from, the, from the stick jock side of the world? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, she's... She <laughs> You're <laughs> like, why am I even here, man? This is good. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I'm really just here to support her. <laughs> um, I mean, from the family side, like I, I, you know, I was fortunate, you know, to be brought in with, a, you know, I had a lot of Squire brothers growing up. Mm -hmm. um, my best friend, my training partner, um, Brennan, uh, it, you know, has done this with me for the last years. His wife ha happens to be, I won't say how many years I've known her, but we went to nursery school together, Keelan. So, uh, you know, he's my closest friends, for all my life have been in here, right. so, you know, and their, their family to me. And, you know, as we've all grown older, my squire brothers and, you know, as they've gotten families, we've all kind of, you know, supported each other over the years. That's interesting. Uh, I, I, I must apologize, Rex. I think apparently I, I just referred to you as TikTok, but are you the current Kingdom ANS champion as well? I am the current, I am the Conscious <laughs> ANS champion. Yeah. What? <laughs> right now. All right. <laughs> My apologies, sir. I, not a one-trick party, apparently. All right. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm currently, uh, I'm currently the uh, concert singer's champion. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, the last couple of years. I've been doing a lot of research into historical tattooing. Mm -hmm. Wait, you, you mentioned the the the, the Pazric tattoos and the Ice Princess tattoos earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, my entry this year was winning in, winning entry for the uh, East Kingdom ANS Cup. Competition. Excellent. Well, congratulations. I, I picked the appropriate shirt that I didn't know, man. I just I grabbed a tunic out of the box. I like that. Oh, I know that. I see these. I know these tattoos, man. Uh, so that's 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 interesting. You know, I, Colin, I want to ask on that family topic for you. You know, speaking of someone who has squires, I think I see this a lot. So I'm I'm a fighter, right? But I I but I'm also a protege. So I see two different sides of that. I see the the idea, the knight squire relationship. Is all about is often about family and that that group really is a, it's the the fighters have that camaraderie that's sort of almost natural. You see it in the military grouping, you see it in the Boy Scout sort of groupings. Those are more natural. Do you see a difference in that in other household styles uh, versus what you sort of come up with as squires with like the other associate types? Uh, I think I mean the way I see everything is every relationship is really different and it sure. you know it's going to be different between uh, you know you take 10 nights and it's going to be different between all 10 nights and their squires. Same with, you know, 
10 Pelicans uh, and their protégés, 10 Laurels and their apprentices. It's, uh, you know, a good relationship is really built, you know, built between communication between, you know, the peer and the peer and the dependent. And that's, you know, as long as you get that, you know, the, everything else around it, you know, you can shift and, you know, be what, what it needs to be for that individual and dependent. Uh, say that for from you, uh, you, you said earlier you had, you had your, your pelican and peopling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which I want to hear more about in a second, by the way. Uh, so as far as your associates and dealing with your associates versus the rest of your sort of the greater household people, like is, is there a difference for you in your relationships with your direct dependents versus other people or like, how, how do you approach that? So that, that's kind of a, a, a more of a convoluted question than one might think. Um, when I mentioned that I have support systems back in Owertha, really what I had was people I literally grew up with, regardless of their household. So it didn't matter what event I went to and it didn't matter who I sat with, I was welcome within whatever circle. So when I came here, this has actually been the first household where um, there's, you know, communication and interaction and, you know, we do things as a family cohesive unit to support other family cohesive units in a greater, you know, uh, perspective. Um, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but what I can compare it to other than, you know, an SCA household is very much, um sort of just like a chosen family mm -hmm. you know these are people that i'm choosing to have in my life and that i'm fortunate enough that they're choosing to have my you know me in their lives as well and so that is probably like the best thing ever really and, and regardless of peer student relationship right you know, just person to person. The fact that they're my students, you know, I get, I feel like I get like extra little bonus gold stars because they do awesome stuff. And they're like, that's my peer. And I'm like, those are my babies, you know, things like that. Uh, so, you know, I have more gold star charts that I get to add up in, you know, the kitchen, but that's about it. My, first of all, my, my peer's slacking. She doesn't have a gold star chart up anywhere. And I'm, I'm very upset about this now. Me I got to talk to her. Star? I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't get gold stars. Apparently, I got to talk to her about this. This is a thing. I don't know. Oh God! All right. All right. Um, <laughs> oh God. Excellent. I love this. Uh, so I was going to say. So uh, we have one of the knights here, Maria, is uh, on sort of the same topic there, uh, who will occasionally yell at my squire when his squire does something smart. He also does when they do something dumb, and I appreciate him for that. That he will also claim them to do dumb things. So uh, he is a uh, equal opportunity for, for claiming his 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 people. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Think we all, I think we all do that. <laughs> you have to. You're like, oh, it's uh, that's me. I did that one. Yeah, yeah, I got a gold star. St just, stick, just, just stick on the computer. It's, it's close enough. Right there. No. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Put in the mail later. We'll get it here. Okay. So, I, I expect now when I see next time I see you interrupt, just slap a gold star on my hat and run away. I, just, I carry them in my head. Of course. Of course you do. I'm not. This is not. This is not surprising to me. Uh, so I, okay, let's let's let's. That's an empowering thing, right? So so I, there's a question here. I, I'm going through some roots questions. Uh, by the way, folks out there watching, I am not at all prepared for the show. So if I look like I'm like digging over here, because I'm digging. So, um, so in that, that's empowering. So one of the questions she has is, how do you empower others, right? So you talked about the supporting people. Empowering, I think, is a, is a very different word. So do you do things? What do you do specifically that's empowerment? like your gold stars for others? Um, do you want to go first? Or do you uh, okay. <laughs> Colin's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the two of us, so, she is the eloquent okay. one. <laughs> so really, I think the best way to empower others is to help them see the strengths that they really do have and recognize it. You know, someone could work really, really, really hard on a piece of garb. And to you and I, it's just two rectangles. But then they tell you that this is my first piece of garb. And you're like, that is so great. Look at those stitches. And you go through and you just build up 
that self-esteem and that confidence that they need to continue. And uh, that's one of the reasons I carry around gold stars because when I see people do good things that I know, like, I know you, I'm like, you're just gonna get a gold star. You know what you did, good job, yes. and you know, move on. Which, I mean, and that's a form of largesse, right? A lot of other people do have, have done similar things where they hand out uh, rings or coins or, or trinkets or whatever. That's just the small child in us all with the gold star. I love that. I, I mean, I was a single mom for years. I am very frugal. Like I said, right. Amazon for the candles, $7 for 500 gold stars. There you go. <laughs> I, I've I've joked quite a few times that, that I, I there's very few words that I want in the world. You know, I I, I appreciate the recognition, but uh, the gold star of Anciora is an actual legit award they have. The, it's, it, it's, it's it's yeah, it, because that's their thing is their, their gold star, and it's their like thanks for helping award. So it's it's a very generic. They can just hand them out like like. And I was like, I need that award. I need that award. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's that's, that's it. of course that in the Paragon of Merriment in the West. That's my other like. I'm a try I'm I'm seeking that one. So, oh, man, I really want to tell you all about the tavern and empowerment. Can Come I on, we got okay. we got all night. Right, right, right. So, for those of you who don't know, um, other than the fact that I'm Viscountess Seva Hrafensdotter, uh, hi, my name is Sheva. Uh, Sheva is happiness, and I am Sheva the Good at what she does. And what she does is works at Joel's Cock and Bowls Tavern, which is based out of the West Kingdom, which is a really, really great place for newcomers to go in the evening to sort of get to know their fellows better. Um, and it is also a great place for um, people to go where they feel they need a safe space. Right. Um, and so, you know, this, um, environment that he created has become one of the West Paragons of Merriment. And I'm yeah. very fortunate to be a part of the tavern, which became that. Um, but that in and of itself is a really empowering place. And that really helped, helped me know what I wanted out of the SCA when I like sort of stepped out of Alaska. I don't think I, I and, and you're right. And, and shout out to Joel. I, I, I've experienced his tavern in person multiple times now and, and, and via the internet a couple of times as well. And I think that as a peer and it sort of is that, that building those places, you know, like you guys have done with your house and sort of helping others that you're like, hey, we're family. Come hang out with us. I think that you're right. That is a good spot for that. And and I hadn't considered, I, I don't often consider safety of places because I'm I'm never not safe in places. Frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm six or a big dude. Like I'm okay. But you're right. I think I, looking around, that is a safe location, right? Yeah. Where we're in the SCA sometimes there isn't. And we had a good question about this. And I, I think let's let's di dive into that. Uh, so from the Outlands uh, via Aiden Belt via the East, I believe, uh, with so many issues surrounding sexual assault and roofies happening at events, how do you and support and protect your students or others? Uh, I knew I knew Colin has several female squires and must give a unique perspective there uh, from her excellency Sabia uh, from the, the Outlands. So how do you support that, Colin? You wanna, I'll let you start it. I mean, uh, my, 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 my female squire is particularly kick, kick, kick ass on her own. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, one, you know, uh, safe space is one of, you know, one of the things we try to do is, you know, not just to, you know, with training is create a safe space for training, mm -hmm. um, you know, a safe place uh, where they, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, maybe some, you know, maybe there's someone who doesn't like female fighters you know, bullying on them or, you know, decides that it's going to pick, you know, whatever it is that, you know, decide that I'm, that's going to be their target of opportunity. Right. Uh, that's female or female presenting. Um, but, you know, creating a safe space where you can train and not have to worry about that or like, you know, try a new art, try a new weapons form, try, you know, uh, any number, any number of things. Um, but even still, we always, mean, you know, uh, when we go out, you know, I always, keep, I always, you know, we always keep tabs on it, you know, as a family, we always keep tabs about where we're going and who we're going out with. And, you know, we make sure, uh, you know, Sheva calls them all the kids. <laughs> uh, right. And it's, it's like, you know, make sure you're, you know, you're going out with your, you know, your, your squire siblings. Or, yeah. You yeah. know, have a buddy, carry a light with you. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Seva, so as a, a a very tiny female person who I'm frankly terrified of, um, like, so what's your thoughts on this? Do you have any things you have to do specifically, or that you've done in your career to sort of be safer and support that? Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of break that down into two separate Oops. answers. So in the learning and creative side, you know, creating a safe space not only for you know my dependents friend and family members and learning a new thing and making sure that they don't feel like intimidated or rushed or um you know that they didn't do the best job that they could or they it wasn't perfect the first time you know there are some people who can do art perfectly the first time that they try and then there's other people who it takes several times for some things and once for others and then just says no i still can't crochet or knit to save my life but i can sew and embroider like a mother so but you know creating the safe spaces to learn and grow as um a is mm -hmm. one thing. on the other hand creating a safe space um for you know smaller stature people, you know, um, he, she, them, yeah. whichever. Did, did tiny know. folks come in all genders, it seems. Right, right. Yeah. And creating a safe space for them is something that uh, just me as a mom, I instill in my children. And my friends and my family, I want them to also not necessarily have a fear but have an awareness of things mm -hmm. that do happen and it happens anywhere and everywhere and so we are big supporters of a buddy system or mm -hmm. b know where your safe spaces are right you know, if you have a safe space and you know this is a safe space or you know that's a safe person you can be like oh hey you know uh cullen that's a safe person you know that if you're in trouble, you can go to that person. Having that as the support system is really what's important uh, to me in impressing on, you know, all of, you know, the ducklings, all of the kids, all of the members of the house. <laughs> the other ducklings, that's adorable, okay. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's another thing coming up. I mean, we got Penza coming up in a few weeks and one of the yeah. things we call especially, you know, our, you know, our, new, you know, first time people there is, hey, you know, one, you know, if you're, if you don't know the person and they're trying to force drinks on you, you don't have to drink anything. Oh, yeah, no. Like, you know, you, you're, you're not comfortable situation, get to a place where you, you know, somebody there, get, you know, or get to a place that's well lit and there's lots of other people around. Um, you know, it's, Pensac's a big place and, you know, a first timer there can, you know, and in and, and, and a and way, it, you feel responsible for that, yeah, right. Uh, right? It's it's not just, you know, that, oh, they're an adult, they can take care of themselves. No, you brought them into this hobby. You've introduced them to this. Yeah. You want to make sure that they remain safe. So we really instill, you know, A, a buddy system. Uh, B, if you don't have a buddy, we have a, what we call a tour guide. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like one very big person <laughs> who basically like hurts all of us little tiny ducks. <laughs> you know? There's, there's a, or another reason this big head is useful. Right. You can it's, see it everywhere. <laughs> for, for me at Penzik, it's Talon. Uh, yeah. who's an OTC here in the East. It's, my um, grand, my grand he's, it's his grand squire, but he's, he's an amazing human. Um, and he's just sort of kind of guides me around and he guides a, a whole flock of us around. Um, so that's something that we really instill, not only to, you know, you know, female dependents, you know, smaller stature dependents, but really anyone that goes. Right. If it's your first time yeah. at Penze, even though you're a six foot three dude, I'm going to be like, hey, just so you know, you need to go out with a buddy because I don't want you going like let's say go into a camp that you really shouldn't go into at certain times of day, you know, 
We'll talk later. I need to know these details <laughs> for not to go. Because, yeah, first time pins that go in, I'm terrified of it, frankly. I'm going to call out camps because I'm friends with them. So. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, for the first time, it's enormously big. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that's, that's just pins it. Right. I, I also may make the list of places I might want to go based on this list, too. We'll, we'll see what they are. Right. <laughs> you know, I need to know. That really goes for any right. event. Right. You know, especially camping events. Like, day events, you know, it's more of like, hey, you know, so-and-so is a safe person. Right. If, like, I have an anxiety attack, I know, you know, I have five people lined out who I can go to who is my safe person. Yeah. And, you know, I make sure that, you know, specifically my dependents, my household, I make sure that if I know that they have that issue, they know who a safe person is. If I'm not there, they can't find me. There you go. So we had a couple of comments come in. Uh, I want to first bring up this one. Uh, an apology to Colin for breaking you with that tough question from uh, let me ask her there. Uh, and then uh, quite a few uh, com commendations on uh, the you guys exemplifying safe space. On my very first camping event, without knowing me, they checked to see if I needed anything when I looked lost one morning. Made a lasting impression on me. That's from Eleanor. Uh, so clearly, you guys have uh, exemplified that. And of course, from Thorin, we know the Raven is home and safe. Apparently, you also come with the Brood Squad, which uh, is helpful. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you bring the Brood Squad, it helps. So, I mean. uh, so uh, continuing on that line, so let's go back to I want to go back to your your pelican and peopling. So you say that what do you what do you mean by that? I can I can take a guess, but what do you mean by that? And sort of how does that play into your retaining people in the um, SCA? So so I, I I really joke when I say get my pelican and peopling, mm -hmm. um, but but I'm, I'm serious at the same time. Um, you know, getting my pelican was a very long road. There was um, a lot of things that I, I don't want to say were stacked against me, but didn't help me. Um, growing up in the SCA is very difficult, as any second generation skating will tell you. Um, because when you're in the SCA as a child, as you're growing, doing the same thing, helping mommy, helping this person, oh, you're helping everyone unload. They're just seeing you as that same seven-year-old doing that. Right. Thing, right? So you know, um, a big dumb 18 year old who did, who big, the big, did the big dumb things. Hey. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, you take that into account. It was a really long road getting there. So eventually what um, happened is I had to take a break. Um, I was a single mom, single momming and the SCA is really hard. Single momming uh, with a five year old and a newborn. Very, very hard. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, uh, and then, you know, I, I came back, but then when I came back, it's like, okay, I'm going to jump in right where I left off. So I took up my offices again. I became Chatelaine, my principality and my barony. I started doing Chatelaine projects. I started outreach programs. I made, you know, a whole uh, brochure that made it to where everyone that handed it out went to a centralized thing to where I basically brought all these people that were spread out in all these different various places into one cohesive unit. And now, you know, everyone's sort of kind of on the same page in the same, on the same ball mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm also feel like I'm very diplomatic <laughs> when it comes to, you know, certain things, because when you're in the SCA, for as long as, you know, we have been, when you have played at, you know, all sorts of levels as we have, you know, there's a lot of different challenges that you can face and, you know, have to overcome. And, you know, I always attribute some of those tasks that happened uh, before my Pelican might have, might have helped. Mm on top of, you know, uh, retaining, water bearing, uh, autocratting, doing everything else that, you know. The, the helium handing of the SCA, right? Right, right. <laughs> and everyone else in the SCA. <laughs> I, the, the, I think the joke is always when I've talked to Pelicans is you become a Pelican when you learn to say no. Yeah. Cause we, you know, we start, you start delegating the thing instead of oh, just doing it yourself. Can I share you know? my favorite Pelican joke? Can I share my favorite? Oh, of course, please do. 
Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, how? And this is this joke came out before there was mod. FYI. So okay. this, no dig against mod. Mods don't play a part. I'm sorry. Um, how many nights does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know how many. Fighters. Fighters. How many fighters? I don't know how many. Three. Okay. We fight over it, one to Marshall. All right. Okay. How many uh, artisans does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know how many. Four. Three to judge, one to do it. Okay. How many pelicans does it take? I'm sorry. Gosh, darn it. How many uh, service people does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know how many. There was a light bulb out. Nice. <laughs> And now it's on the internet forever, and I love it. Yeah. All right. Really great. Uh, Mistress Lilla taught me that joke, and I tell it so ever. often. Hey, you, you got to laugh in the crowd. There you go. You've done your job now. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Uh, and of course, we've we've had some more comments coming in about, about you guys just being awesome. By the way, from from Saga, which I've heard that I've heard the story about her name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that one. Uh, well, we called Shadowlane her. We love her. She's got. I get to meet her and uh, and and Gunner and uh, with the, with the Samson at, at Gulf Wars this year, and I I, just, I loved hanging out with them. They were a ton of fun. So yeah, no, yeah. decided to smack her with a stick again. Love Samson, love him. I mean, I, I they can leave Samson at the house, but Gunner and Saga can come hang out. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that to his face too. It's fine. <laughs> no, Saga's my squire. I adore her. <laughs> you you have done well, sir. I'll say that. Um, all right, so she, she, Sam, you talked a little bit about being a single mom and taking a break in the SCA, which I think a lot of people who've uh, been around the SCA and have been are, are bigger people, bigger names, have, have taken a break. Uh, during your times, and Colin, I want to hear your thoughts on this too, during your times in the SCA, uh, have you found a time where you have suffered from a need uh, for increased or decreased socialization, support, or finding your interests? So like when you're like, man, I'm, I just, this is, I'm doing it, but I don't really, not enjoying it anymore. And I need oh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Tell us about a time when you've had, dealt with that and sort of what got you through it. Uh, I, I'm literally coming right out of it right now. Yeah. Perfect. Huh? <laughs> I mean, um, so as, as most everyone knows, uh, the past few years have been a bit difficult for a lot of people, yeah. right? Uh, there was um, a very difficult start to a reign in the East. And then there was a pandemic and then uh came out of the pandemic and then there was you know you know really really good rains all throughout um but then there was one where i took an office uh or a position within the rain and after um doing so much in previous rains i was like this is gonna be easy it'll be fine and colin's like are you sure i'm like yeah I have it all planned out. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to delegate. That, that's that's what I'm supposed to do, right? As Trust a pelican, I'm supposed to delegate. Right. Trust me. It'll mm -hmm. be fine. So fast forward, it's not fine. Uh, and I got very, very, very crispy. Very, very, uh, I don't want to. Very, very withdrawn. Um, it was... It was it was difficult. It was difficult. And and I'm not gonna lie. And and you know, I talked my friends through it like as it's happening. I'm like, hey, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not being me. I'm not feeling myself. I'd go to events, I'd sit half of the event in my car. Like it was just something I didn't feel I could do, but I really wanted to. So I tried and then just like uh, no. Um, so it's something that everyone goes through. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that you really want and you're really passionate about, you'll find a way. You know, one of my favorite, am I allowed to cuss on the show? Yes. Hold on, hold on. I'll put the banner up for you. Okay. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite mottos is make that shit work. Right? I, if I need something that to anyone else seems unobtainable and I set my mind to, but I will make that shit work. So the fact that I love this hobby so much 
I will find other ways to make that shit work. Right. I, you know, I, I, I got burnt out on sewing my favorite art. I don't want to sew. I don't want to stamp. I don't want to embroider. I got out in the shop the other day and I started, uh, carving on some stone and let me tell you what I really like that so that's what I'm going to be doing this week and then I totally forgot about this show until you messaged me this morning <laughs> and that's why I do that folks <laughs> and then I like, oh I have to put on garb and you know be me and so literally literally those two things over the past couple you know days has been really but it's been like See, I knew I could make it work. I just had to like, just keep trying, but that's me. That That is totally me, myself. I know my brain and that's how I was able to do it. It goes back to the, the fake it till you make it mentality. You just yes. Yes. You keep, keep going at it and base, bashing your head against that wall until the wall falls down. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That's what they told me when I became a CNA is to fake it till you make it. <laughs> That's not terrifying at all. Okay, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, Colin, what about you? What's a, a time you had to deal with this? I mean, nowadays, if I, uh, you know, I kept, last year I uh, ended up having a ruptured tricep. So, you know, um, the last uh, 12 months or so have been kind of off. But Oh, yeah, there was that too. <laughs> there was that too. Um, but, um, you know, if I've been, you know, last year or so, really my squires have been kept me back. Uh, you know, I've got I've got Saga, who's local to me. Her square sibling, Ruspa, who, uh, you know, they're both. You know, they both inspire me to go go back out there and do it, even if I don't want to. Um, uh, and the, the the rest of my squires, you know, are all. You know, we got we have a we have a chat where we all just talk and bull, you know bullshit with each other, and they you know, it's sort of just like that keep that encouraging. You know, if someone's one of them's having a bad day, they can vent on it. Um, but, uh, you know, it kind of keeps everyone a little motivated. Um, but for a really good example, like right before about six, eight months before I got knighted, I had like, I like, I finished Penzec and I like, I had been trying. So, you know, I've been, you know, you get to the point where you're, you, you know, you feel like you're getting close to, you know, to the belt and you're getting, for, you, you know, you get frustrated and hit a plateau and, I actually hit a point where I didn't like fighting anymore. I'm like, why am uh, I doing that? I'm pretty sure her Grace Helga called it the angry unbelt phase. It, it, yeah. It, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I was able to look at, I was able to like go, I, I used to really love fighting. Like, mm -hmm. why am I doing this? If I don't love, if I, if I'm, why am I doing this? If I don't love fighting, it took some, it, it took some time off. Right. And, and finally, like, I'm like, you know what? I'll go back to fighting when I decide that, Hey, I'm going to go do this for me. And, uh, yep. you know, probably took two, maybe, maybe three months off from fighting. And one, you know, one night I went, yeah, I want to go to practice, went to practice. And then five months after, five months after that, they, they elevated me, but it was, you know, you gotta, you know, it's find your joy in it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, and if, you know, you can't, find your joy, you know, find your joy through, through, you know, others. Right. You know, I, you know, not having not been able to fight a lot in the last year, I've, I've really enjoyed watching the success, the successes of my squires. Um, you know, my friend, you know, not just my squires, but like also my friends, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, cheering the, you know, kind of cheering them on and, you know, seeing everyone, you know, having successes has been, you know, helping me. You know, so I think it's really interesting the, the two answers there. So basically, it's ADHD and 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 family are the two answers you gave. Yes, <laughs> that tracks. So you know, we're a bunch of dysfunctional neurodivergent nerds here. I That's mean, how we do this. You know, ADHD, a little bit of anxiety. Throw in some, you know, throwing some family family in there. Just sprinkle the trauma jar and see what falls out because it's it's accurate. I, I think I call you a really great point there about finding the joy and, and Master Aslak talked about it a little bit as well and, and he, he's right. He had to go back to the roots of what gave him joy in the SCA. Uh, right. He had a big burnout so it's re very recently. Um, and I, I think I've done the same thing. You know, I think it's, you have to really step back and go, okay, why am I doing this? Uh, one of the phrases in, in say, you said a minute ago, 
uh, in the wrong way, and I'll, I'm gonna, I'm going to correct you publicly here. I get to put on garb. I'm like, now I don't have to. I get to, right? Yeah. I get to go see my friends. I get to go do the dumb thing we do. Uh, that mentality really helped helped me change the. I don't have to go do this thing. You know that the, the, that event's going to keep happening whether I show up or not. Right. Yeah. They've been doing it for fifty something years without me. They don't need me there. That is right. a perfect correction. I applaud you, sir. Good job. Go to camp for you. I, I, I got think it's a yard today. Look at me. There you go. I, mean, I love this shit. Like that. This is like I like I see. I see people. It, 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 I see people change. I'm wearing today. I love it. <laughs> it looks really good. Yeah. By the way, I'm, I'm excited. And you got the hats and thing. I, I know. I, I'm excited to see people wearing garb. Uh, like so, I we go when we leave events. We don't change. We go to the store and we're like, like, what are you? What? What's this? And we have to stop and talk to people. It's a, it's oh, the. Yeah, I want that off, but that's only <laughs> hot and sweaty and gross. I want AC just on me. Nothing. That's great. <laughs> uh, it, the, the hats will come off generally, like which. So for those who, who who've watched our shows before, if, especially this show. Uh, uh, the thing you don't see backstage after the, every show of this is the minute that camera turns off, Ramut's hat flies, the veils fly off. There's there's crown flying everywhere usually at the show because it's usually layers for her. So mine's not as bad, uh, but uh, I get that. All right, so we got we still got some time here. I want to I want to dig in some more. Uh, what's a passion topic? So so we talked about family. We talked about the, so the ADHD and, and finding new joys. Um, what else do you do to help within your family inspire others like what's what's the thing you can think of that's a a strategy or sort of a thing you could do to that someone else could use that's a concrete thing not just that sort of big creating family idea because that's hard i teach them to do the same okay so how do you sort of talk about that how do you how do you teach that great, skill great, great, great. um so um uh, as a child in the sca you have very little that you're able to do Mm -hmm. Right. There's, you know, uh, there's a lot of fighting and there's a lot of arts and sciences. And, you know, we're very fortunate in the East. The East has a great youth system set up for youth combat, uh, youth rapier where marshals are available um, and, you know, uh, youth activities. So that's that's great. Um, I just lost track. You were talking about what. You teach, you teach. Oh, 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 teaching my students to do things. Okay, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop you for a second because we, we got a comment I'm going to bring up to you. It's okay. no, this is fun for me. I love this. I'm, I'm, t I'm, I'm, I'm breaking your brain. Uh, so back to your joke. There's <laughs> some you pelican. That joke is a pelicant. Does it mean you pella should? No, no, no. All right, continue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That I, I, you're welcome. Go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> that was fun for me. I had to do it. <laughs> I'm a terrible human. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so one of the very few things that you can do as a kid growing up in the SEA is water bear, right? So, water bearing comes very naturally for people. You see someone who is literally look like they're about to die because they learn gray and on the ground, you want to give them water. So one of the things that you know we started um in the west was a water bearing support system mm -hmm. uh Joel very kindly called it you know a shove a shack and you know so that way you know because we can't prove that the s room doesn't say sh i think i'm hoping that's right if mm -hmm. you know, is watching she'll correct me yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually message her after this and ask her but anyways okay. she doesn't so, she doesn't know how to say moose either it's it's moose and moosin she is wrong it is <laughs> moose it is not moose moosin meese that's how it's pronounced don't even start with me <laughs> i just felt kind of held in soaring both just butt pucker on that one so. the moose in a rampant <laughs> moose in a rampant Sorry, it's water bearing. So water bearing one versus. of the things that they've been useful for it, honestly. <laughs> they can carry lots of jugs. I mean, we can make this work. <laughs> really I, I've told folks I'm, I'm going to be visiting Advocal soon. I was like, look, I'm coming to Canada. I want to see a moose. I want to play hockey. We got things I got to do here, okay? Yeah, moose exist in Maine, and I think they lie. I think they just put up the signs to tease me. 
because I still have not seen it. They're just it's just fancy deer at that point. It's just a fancy deer. <laughs> I'm sad. But you know, one of the things so so one of the things that we do is we provide water, right, at camp. Whenever we go to camping events or day events, we set out water jugs. So something that a lot of like our students uh, combined have started doing is instead of me saying, okay, who's going to bring water? Who's going to bring Gatorade? Who's going to bring snacks? Is now they just bring it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now it's not, what are you going to bring? It's like, oh, thank you for bringing X. Oh, great. We needed that also. I didn't think of that. So they're learning to do the same thing that we started out doing. Like I started out water bearing, but I just had a case of water in my car. And so I brought it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it got drank. So I went and I got another one and I just had it ready and available. And so now that's something that we're teaching others to do in order to, you know, help their fellows continue to have fun and do the thing. Yeah. Colin, anything from you? So what's your, like, how, how, do, how do you pass on one of your skills? Like what's the, what's the way you teach your squires to be better knights in this case, in that sort of keeping people around idea? Uh, so one of the things I said before, you know, we have, you know, I have a, I have a chat, I have a chat group, which is, you know, just squires and, you know, you know, well, a lot of, a lot of it is just like, you know, checking in and, you know, kind of inspiring, you know, we, we'll sit down and talk about stuff. We'll post fight videos. So we, you know, keeping, we have, we have a lot of lines of communication open and, you know, we keep, I keep the, you know, I keep, you know, I keep the door open all the time for them to, you know, to ask questions or, you know, you know, we'll get, I'll get random stuff like, you know, Hey, in this video, this, you know, this guy looks like he's not taking a shot. And, you know, is that a, or, you know, or he'll, they'll ask some questions about another kingdom, like inter, you know, inter kingdom anthropology stuff. So, you know, I try to teach him as much as I, you know, as I can. And, you know, the other part about it is, you know, if I don't, you know, if I don't know it or don't have an answer for him, like, you know, we have a, I got a lot of friends all over the country and, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, we can always reach out and, you know, if I can't teach it to you, I'll find someone who can. The the, the I know a guy mentality, right? Right. <laughs> but I know a guy, yeah. Which, I mean, Jersey, come on. I know a guy who knows a guy. You know a guy. Exactly. I think you have to, if you live in Jersey, you have to know that statement. It's a thing. Yeah. Um, and also, just to be clear here, I, I have two people in the comments who agree with me. Uh, both Alex described is in Camp Meese, and uh, in your own squire is uh, it's Meeson. So. Oh my goodness, get both <laughs> of saying, um, you. Love them. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I found another question that we'll talk. So we talked a little bit about uh, you know the socialization aspect, and we, and we talked about your your arts and sciences. With that's that blows me away, and I love that, and I want to see I want to see your documentation, by the way. Um, so after the show, send that my way. Uh, let's talk about goal setting, right? So so I think uh, as somebody who's looking at doing different things, and whether you're looking at uh, water bearing, fighting, or, or doing an ANS thing. Uh, how do you go about setting goals and teaching others set goals, identifying, setting, reassessing, both short and long term? Um, is that something you've, de you've dealt with personally in, in for others? Um, I, I wouldn't say necessarily identifying goals. Um, really, you know, when, when someone comes into the SCA, Right, they generally come in either with an interest in just medieval in general or an actual aspect of it, like fighting, right? There's some people that come in, I just wanna go and fight. And then they get interested in the rest mm -hmm. where you know, there's some of us that get interested in the rest and then they get interested in fighting. Um, so, you know, when they come in with an actual goal of, you know, they, <laughs> I, I said goal. And then they came in, they come in, you know, with an idea of what they want to learn more about. They already have set a goal for themselves. Mm. So, you know, I'm not really helping them identify it. What I will do is I will help them in any way I can in achieving that goal. Right. I will introduce them to people. Uh, I will help them get supplies. Uh, you know, whether it be like, here, have them shipped to my house, it's cheaper. Or, oh, I have that, I can bring it to you. Or, you know, oh, you know, just come over here and, you know, use my thread and my sewing machine because I really don't want to come and spend $5 in gas to bring you a $2 spool. You know, just 
you know, things like that. You know, that I think is the most. Yeah. Yeah, Tony, anything from you? I mean, part of it, like just Sheva said, you know, come you know, come over and use our sewing machine. It's like, you know, we spend a lot of time, you know, just hey, come on over. You know, we're gonna, you know, you need armor. We're gonna help you build some armor. Uh, you want to learn about fighting? Backyard's open. We'll teach you know. We'll bring the pell out. We'll show you, you know, show you fighting. Uh, oftentimes, you know, I'll be outside with you know a couple people working on something, popping back in the shop. Shove will be inside talking. You know, teach it. You know, should be running block printing over here and sewing over here. <laughs> Several other things going on all at once, and yeah. people popping up, po people popping in all, all you know throughout the day. But uh, yeah, like not next weekend the weekend before penzik we're having a, a last minute penzik ah weekend <laughs> so basically the house is going to be open from friday night until sunday night yeah. for anyone who wants to come over and like we have cots and beds yeah. and couch space and like the, the, the penzik panic got it okay the penzik yeah. Panic weekend. yes yeah <laughs> that's uh yeah i feel that i'm so, because today being July second, uh, this is now the I, we're now in the month that Pinsic happens. So previously, it's been like, oh yeah, that's next month. That's not a problem. And then it was like, Pinsic's this month now. Crap. Okay, we got to get ready. So yeah, I'm not I'm not ready yet. I'm not even gonna lie. So, I have like six pairs of long shorts to me. It's great. Yeah. It's not doing anything else. Yeah, so that's just the shorts. You got things to do. That's just um, the shorts. Apparently, the uh, kitchen in your house is the only room without some sort of snoozy, sleepy land furniture. Uh, that is it's, true. You have a very comfy house. <laughs> that, is, that is true. That However, true. people have slept on the floor. <laughs> you could throw a cot in the kitchen. It could happen. Uh, All right. All right. I'm going to do a couple of show plugs, and then we'll do some uh, some shout outs and some final thoughts. Okay. So, you tight. All right. Coming up next on Calabar's Corner. Uh, so, it is Pinzig Month. So, our, this schedule is going to be a little wacky, but next Sunday, uh, I'll be joined by my very own Lady Kisa. Uh, there you go. She's talking about signs and phrases. Now, when I say signs and phrases, this sounds a little weird, but uh, Kisa has a bit of a axe to grind with the SCA, uh, and it's the lack of signage. Uh, and uh, we, we've been talking about doing the show for a while, and specifically Penzik came up recently with the idea of land grabbing, what the hell that even was. And when she asked the question, she was told, well, that's an old phrase from like 30 years ago. We don't actually use it anymore, but it's still a phrase that's used in the SCA. And that's very common. So as a, a relative newcomer to the SCA, who's now been around for like three or four years, she has a bit of a bone to pick. So we'll talk about that and uh, maybe like the SCA can improve on their signs. Uh, and of course, uh, we will have another Rose of Retention coming up in August. So look forward to that in August. We will not be having one uh, at the end or no, maybe not first week of August, we have like later in August or September because of Penzik. Uh, so be, be watching that. I may host one from Penzik. We'll see. Um, there will be a Who's Cause Is It Anyway uh, Friday night live from Penzik. That'll be fun. Uh, and there, there should be a coffee with Cal from there as well. But again, stay tuned to the channel. Uh, if you want to support Calvers Corner, everything we do here uh, with all the channels that we support, look us up on Patreon, patreon.com. Where's my banner? There we go. Patreon.com forward slash KK Productions. You also look us up on Redbubble by searching KK Productions. Uh, you can check me out on TikTok. I will be TikToking the uh, road to Penzik. Uh, we're going to do some traveling beforehand, and then we'll be doing some TikToks at Penzik. So check that out. And as always, you can follow Remote, the normal guest, uh, normal host for Road Retention at Gina Kitts. Uh, she, she's been doing a lot of her Pelevation things coming up. So, uh, so check that out. Um, anything to, to promote for you guys coming up other than this giant war you're about to attend? Uh, so there's Penzik, but there's also a Viking immersion event that he is autocratting in September here in the East Kingdom. Uh, not only is it going to be in the middle of the woods, there's a long haul and a big bonfire and a lot of uh, Viking stuff. It's, stuff. It's, 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 it's going to be great. There's... <laughs> like battle scenarios, there's Valkyries, there's, you know, Sears. It's going to be, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be very inclusive and very fun. That sounds amazing. I, I'm, I, man. So I, I've been needing to get up to the East Kingdom. Uh, obviously, Penzik's going to be my East Kingdom event this year, but uh, 
I, I, mean, I need to get up and see you guys and just be in that area because there's too many people I know up there now that are just awesome folks like yourselves. So, well, well, I mean, yeah, and apparently yeah. there's I can just sleep in your kitchen. So, I mean, you don't have to sleep in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, so much work, you know. Well, I mean, you gotta, <laughs> anytime you want to come up, you got a couple of great events. You got, um, you know, you got Market Day at Burka in January. Uh, that's yeah. that's the one I'm like, mm, the, especially because the girls want to come up and spend all my money, so that's a good uh, one for them. I mean, that's also a very good one. Right. Uh, great Northeastern War, uh, Nick, two weeks? Uh, yeah, Great Maine. Northeastern War is in a couple weeks. That's a fun one. Um, no, just really, Kinsic, Berka, Genu. There you go. It's gonna be East Kingdom's where it's happening, man. So, All right, so... Check those events out, and we'll share out the uh, the links to, to those. Uh, I'll get uh, Colin to send me the link to his event, uh, the, the event he's autocratic, because I'm excited about that. I always support my peoples. Um, let's do some shout-outs. It's a tra traditional thing for road retention. A shout-out from you guys. So who is a person or, or group that has done awesome things around you recently you'd like to do a shout-out for? Um, so I'm actually, if I am if I can, I'm going to go mm -hmm. recent. But it's so recent, It's she's been doing it for years. Years. Uh, Baroness Kalita from the West Kingdom has been one of the major proponents for the Newcomers Project there in the West. Uh, she has probably made over a thousand hats, heavy bags, uh, and other numerous uh, crocheted and knit things to give out to newcomers. Many a uh, king and queen and other people have worn her hats to keep their dome warm. Um, and her largesse has spread from the West as far as the East. And really there's, her hats are all over the known world. And it's because she started it for newcomers. There you go. That's always, it's always interesting to see the, uh, the, the little passions people like I can do, I can sew a thousand of these bags and people need them. I love and, that. And, and she just does it. She just does it. She'll just yep. sit there. She'll be on the phone and she'll make a hat. Boom. Done. <laughs> you just feed fabric in one side and hats come out the other side. You're like, how did that happen? She can do like 10 an hour. I swear. I, I, I've, I've sewn, like, okay, I can sew a little, like a little, little, and good God, I don't get it. No, I, she, I, have, like, I have like three quotes I have to go finish tonight, she's actually. So. She's a machine. She's, she's a great, wonderful human, and she does very good things for the society, and we are very lucky as a society as a whole to have her. That's awesome for that. Thank you for that shout out for her. Uh, so my shout out this evening is going to be to two folks uh, from the Barony of, uh, from the Kingdom of Kaid, the Barony of Starkoffin, uh, Joe and Ducky, past guests here on the show and have uh, have guest hosted with me on uh, This Just In. Uh, they have recently both stepped down from their roles as uh, Exchequer and Deputy Seneschal. Uh, I want to thank both of them for their service to their Barony and to their Kingdom of Kaid uh, and to what they've done for DEI and some of the other efforts out there. Uh, they are both amazingly awesome, just outspoken people um, who have are just excelling in being visible and being, uh, I'm going to use the word different uh, as, as both dark skinned people and, and uh, two spirited people. Um, but I, I appreciate them for being the examples of how to do things right, even when stressed and even when bad things are happening to them. Uh, so thank you to Joe and Ducky for just being awesome. All right. Um, back to you guys. I want to thank you both for being awesome people as well. Uh, like I said, I, I, I've known both of you uh, for a minute here and, and the words, Sam, I, I reached out to Samson, I reached out to friends of mine and just said, hey, I need people for the show. We need new guests. And Samson's like, I got you. Let me tell you about some people. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, you're right. These are these are great people. Let's do this. Uh, so uh, I want to thank you both for, for spending time with me this evening and, uh, and for the last minute shift and, and whatnot. So, uh, no, of so course. I, everything happens for a reason. Another one of my favorite yeah. sayings. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I always like to end my shows with a little bit of a final thought. So if you guys had to wrap up for you, retention, right? So we talk about recruitment a lot in the SCA, but how, retention, uh, what is retention for you in like 10 words or less? What's, what's your sort of the culminating thought for that? You reap what you sow. There you go. All right. I'd like to say and that's what, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, so as, as a reaper, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the moniker there as well. There you go. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, those out there watching, uh, so 
again, we always need you guys for the show. So if you have somebody who inspires you or you think is awesome uh, in keeping people around the SCA and getting you excited about the SCA, send them our way. You can look us up on Cal Barter's Corner, either on YouTube or the Facebook, or I'm just going to poke this way because I don't know where all hell the buttons are. Just <laughs> p- poke a button, you'll get to me eventually. Uh, or reach out to someone who knows me and find me directly. Uh, let us know. We'd love to have them. We'd love to have them on. Um, we're scheduling out as far as possible. And if we get a ton of guests, we'll do two shows a month. I don't care. We'll make it happen. So bring that up and let us know. Uh, but until next time, this has been Seva, Cullen, and Cal in Cal Bar's Corner. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night.